roundtable session this morning. We don't have any presentation slides or anything that we, we were going to share with you. We'd really like to try and invite as much participation as possible for, for an, anybody that's joined today. Um, hopefully towards the end of the session, if you wanted to pop your microphone and camera on to, to join us in the discussion, you'd be most welcome to. Or alternatively, you could just add your comments in, in the chat. Um, so, so what we wanted to talk about today was the the what the impact of the the pandemic has had upon those barriers between the staff and the students, and it wouldn't be possible to really have a good discussion about this without having a student with us. So I'll be shortly handing over to um, to Peter and then Maya, our wonderful stu student from De Montfort, who is going to share her perspective as well. And I think one of the things that we wanted to explore is the opportunities that have been presented to us in breaking down those barriers. And, and I guess it's that the pandemic has meant that our students and staff have seen each other in a very different environment to what we may have done previously. So prior to the pandemic, you know, the majority of teaching will have been face to face. Um, academics would turn up, you know, dressed professionally. There would be um, an interaction in the classroom and that would be the end of it. But but with the pandemic and, and, and academics you know, teaching from home, students learning from ho home, we've seen into our lives in a completely different way. We've seen different aspects of our lives, um, you know, in no way that we would have ever done before. And I think the, the, exact, the, the way that I looked at this is like, if you imagine when you were at primary school and, you know, at the weekend, you're going shopping with your parents in Asda and you bump into your teacher and, you know, what, what are you doing here? You know, teachers live at the school. You know, how do you have a life outside of? Um, how do you have a life outside of school? You know, what are you doing in Asda? This is really strange, and it, you know, it really it changes something in your mind because you see people in a very different setting, and we've all had probably countless different experiences of, of things that have happened, experiences that we've had over the last fifteen months or so, that have allowed us to develop completely different. Um, relationships and different ways of engaging between staff and students and I think we wanted to explore that today um, and actually invite you then perhaps in the chat just to start the conversation maybe to share some of those stories of, of experiences that you've had that you know slightly unusual or things you've seen um, I think the common one for me is uh, where I sit here I'm, I'm facing a window and I have the window open and very often my cat will jump up to the window but every time it makes me do a little scream um, and, and, you know, <laughs> you know, completely throws me off. So you see some really good examples, I think, of different ways that, you, you know, um, that, that, you, that you interact with each other. And that there's some positives in that because it could break down that, those more traditional barriers and open up so that we have more meaningful conversations. So I'm going to stop at that point and, and ask for. Um, Peter to to pick up from here if that's okay and just share his thoughts. Yeah, I think in many ways I feel a very similar way to to Leanne. I think from my perspective, for excellence to occur in education, um, two things have got to happen. First of all, the um, the support and the academic side of things has to be excellent. But secondly. The student side has to be excellent. To have true excellence within higher education, you need both parties, both the academics and the students working together. And I think um, during the last 15 months, we've seen a, an incredible shift in um, that approach. People's whole frames of references have changed. It's not just about seeing your lecturer in a different, uh, in a different context, although that's absolutely key. What's also key is that despite the sort of um, the comments about maybe people not putting their cameras on or uh, not putting their, their mics on, there's been a great amount of pressure amongst students for students to participate and to take ownership of their learning. For students coming into the university, um, we can catch up with them, we can, we can nag them, we can check that they're okay, we can pick up on any changes in behaviour. But given that we're doing everything virtually, we've got to work far more in a partnership. Um, for those of you who, uh, uh, who are fans of transactional analysis, we've moved from not quite a parental child um, approach, but certainly 
far more towards an adult adult relationship and our intention in this round table is really to make sure we give a voice to students rather than us just talking about what students should be thinking or should be doing so um, on that basis I think I would like to uh, um, stop talking I'm hoping Maya will now appear or has reappeared I think she's just uh, uh, gone but um, what we're keen to do is to make sure that the students get um, the majority of time during this uh, this round table so uh, not sure if Maya's here if we, while we just wait for, for Maya to re, re, rejoin us, I thought I'd just um, explain some of the things that the, that we'd been doing at, at De Montford. And actually, the reason why we'd asked Maya to join us today was because of an initiative that she she um, instigated and led, really, uh, in February this year. And, you know, we'd had some feedback from her and a group of students on online seminars, and, and we decided to do a takeover. And, and that meant that led to a group of students designing this session delivered to academics around what makes a good seminar and actually um, Maya was the only one that ended up agreeing to, to deliver that and did that session to over 100 academic staff and it was incredibly insightful and, and one of the key things that she picked up on there as well as being a first year student and really this being her only experience of university was how well that that was shared. Um, Maya's back with us. So hopefully you oh, can hear over. That's fine. Go ahead. I was just having some problems connecting, but it should, fingers crossed, it should be okay now. Um, am I just starting off with introducing myself and, and my experience of this year? So uh, my name is Maya Ferrari, and I've just finished my first year uh, studying law and criminal justice at De Montfort University. Uh, for me personally, it's been a, a very positive experience this year. Uh, and I think that there has been maybe more opportunities this year than there would be in, in a standard year without remote learning. Um, personally, keeping it on track with the, the topic of conversation here, I think that allowing students to have a window into lecturers' lives has been interesting just to see what lecturers do, where they live, how they live but also from the perspective that it creates a much more uh, comfortable and open learning environment and it takes away a lot of that initial uh, stress and anxiety away from students when you can actually interact with the lecturer perhaps slightly more informally. Um, I've definitely noticed that that's opened a lot more uh, students up to feeling comfortable to contributing and to really taking as much part in active learning as, as possible. Um, the more open and honest that lecturers have been and a couple uh, particular lecturers come to mind there's been more interaction of students more students have attended seminars and and got the most out of it including higher grades um, but interestingly i think conversely to that lecturers have had possibly the least insight into their students lives this year um, because students have been generally on the end where they're not turning their cameras on, not turning their microphones on. Um, and so it's possibly made lecturers' lives a little bit more difficult in trying to gauge student understanding, pick up on concerns, see where they've lost students or um, really just interact from their side. So it's a bit of an interesting uh, thing that students have had the most insight and lecturers have perhaps had a significantly reduced insight. But I think there are benefits to that. So my overall uh, experience has certainly been very positive. Um, I would hope that it has been the similar to, to most other students. And, and just to, to take a point that you'd raised there, Maya, and, 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 and explore it a bit further, that breaking down of the barrier, so what you see into the lives of, of academics, um, you know, how, how does that compare to your prior experience? What, and, and what aspects of that would you like to continue, it, you know, as we hopefully are entering this post-pandemic era? Uh, well, I think as, as students go forward, your setting becomes increasingly professional. So whether you start going to job interviews or, you know, secondary school is, is more formal than primary school and sixth form is more formal than secondary school and, and so on and so forth. Uh, and so I think that students get increasingly nervous 
because it's their first experience. So everything's very formal, everything's very professional. I'm not exactly sure how to conduct myself, how to ask questions, if it's right to ask questions, to question people, to question theories, cases, whatever it may be. Um, and so breaking down that barrier and seeing a more comfortable and for want of a better word, more more informal setting, it, it's a, a, a nicer introduction to that professional formal setting. So the lecturer is being open and honest and relaxed. Maybe you've got a hoodie on, maybe it's Friday and you've got your cup of tea. It allows students to be comfortable and go, or maybe I don't have to be so formal. If I have a problem, I can just ask. If I have an issue, I can just raise it. Um, or even if the conversation starts about on something that's not remotely related to the learning, it gets people talking. And then once they've turned their microphone on once, if it's to say the, the name of their dog or their favourite football team, they people, you know, you feel more comfortable to do it again and again and again. So. I was, I was going to ask, because at the start of the pandemic, I think I'm, I'm probably typical in that I try to replicate the office or replicate the classroom here. And so, you know, I, I was barricading the door and not allowing anybody in and, you know, um, putting muzzle on next door neighbours' dogs and, and those sort of things. And after a while, I, I just sort of almost sort of accepted that um, it wasn't going to be perfect and the, you know, the Amazon person, um, other online delivery companies are available, would knock at the door. From a student perspective, how do you view it? Do, do you want it to be totally professional or are you comfortable with the fact that there are lives outside uh, the classroom and, uh, you know, Dennis's dogs will... will um, will invade or, or Alex's baby daughter will be present. It, it, how do you view that? Um, well, I've previously mentioned a lot about how the transition from secondary school or sixth form to university is a, is a strange one for students because it goes from extremely formal, you know, second name only basis and, and uh, uh, a power hierarchy where you know the teachers aren't to be questioned and they're to be listened to and, and so on um, and then you go to university and and you're asked to question things and you're speaking to your lecturer on a first name basis and all these very strange things so I think seeing the human side is strange initially when you know when you see that <laughs> for example one of my lecturers would get deliveries every friday of you know from a different clothing brand we'd all ask what she got and stuff like that seeing that's very strange because you don't look at your lecturers that way you look at them like you would in primary school oh miss so and so miss so and so um and it allows the students to like i say relax enough to feel comfortable having the discussions because university is such a different experience from anything that goes prior to that education wise allowing the comfortable learning environment seeing that the lecturers have imperfect lives just like everyone else actually matches what university wants students to do which is to discuss rather than just give an answer that's from the textbook to discuss and to question and and to to bring that conversation in so i think it's been beneficial in that sense i think that's that's a really important now and 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 those of us that might remember going back to the work of jilly salmon quite a, a long time ago now where and you know before we were really in these realms of discussing online learning one of the key things that she'd made that was to be able to establish a really good online learning environment you have to get the social right first so you have to develop those relationships so um you know often we wonder why students don't engage if we put a, you know have an online discussion forum as an example pose a question and ask students to respond to it you know because we we haven't really established that relationship there's an element of nerves around that and i think what you were saying there mayor about um you know having the opportunity to have discussions rather than that sort of just one-way knowledge transfer um but that actually students can with this breaking down of barriers can become much more involved in more human interactions and more informal conversations allowed the establishment of that social dynamic um, which then should facilitate better learning experiences particularly if the future is looking something that's more hybrid and that there will continue to be some online learning along with some stuff back on on campus as well so i think that's a, a really useful point 
and um, we're just trying to figure out whether how we can get Dennis's dog to mark the essays because that would be fantastic. <laughs> just need to make sure he understands how the rubrics work. A couple of points in the chat I just want to pick up on, actually, um, apart from Dennis's dogs. But uh, Alison has, um, has mentioned um, about uh, how she felt that it never had less insight into a student experience. And this is this is something that I really, really would like your input on, Maya, Maya because within at Liverpool John Moores, we're, we're looking at things such as sort of town halls where everybody can get together, coffee breaks where lecturers and, and students um, can chat. And it's trying to transition from the virtual world and keeping all of that sort of we know, you know, you know a little bit more about us um, into uh, back into the classroom. And I'm just a little concerned that we're just going to go back into the old days um, and um, lose all of that sort of connection, if you like, that staff and students have, have picked up on. So I just wondered if there's anything we can do, do you think, to sort of keep that that sort of formality but also informality uh, i think one of the things that um it's useful to to bear in mind is that the university students obviously we are adults and we're looked on as adults but university is probably the first time that we are really treated as adults um and to to bear that in mind in as much as we probably still need a push because we're not quite sure what to do or where to go so i think in terms of the the balance of formality and informality um just setting a, a good social start to the course um making good connections with the students so even if that was to include you know your first session in university just being you know icebreakers conversations getting to know students getting students to make connections between themselves as well as with the lecturer um, talk about yourself you know introduce yourself and what the name of your dog is if put a picture up if you'd like but i think the things that that are really important are building really really good teacher student relations and that's where the informality is important because it it makes people comfortable to say, oh, that's my lecturer. Or you should see that, for example, you should see his, his or her dog or, or what have you. So I think the informality is really best suited towards the beginning of the course um, and, and used to, to build those relations. Um, there's the postie, perfectly on time, <laughs> <laughs> as if I planned it. Um, uh, it's like I say, the informality is best suited at the very beginning of the course um, where you can build the relations. And then after that, I think you can keep it fairly formal um, as, as you continue the course. Obviously, it's still there designed to be taught and learned and, and what have you, but just to, to form those connections. And I think what, what you said there about those professional, you know, the, the, the balance of the formal informal is it's so important that we get that right. You know, establishing the social, as you say, at the beginning really does help to break down those barriers. But at some point, we also need to, um, you know, keep the expectations about how to, you know, how to work and live within a professional uh, setting is also important. I'm, I'm sure that, you know, we've all had experiences of st students, maybe staff even, sending communications that probably don't meet the standards of what you'd expect if you were working in a in you know in the business world and essentially we're preparing students for that environment and um you know sometimes communications can be over social or they could be over familiar yeah. really not, not the sort of thing that you'd expect to see um, and so it's those how, how do we how do we then remind students that um, you know, what does a professional email look like, for example, that doesn't include, hey, smiley face, here's a gif, you know, <laughs> and, and but, you know, knowing when that's appropriate and when it's not appropriate is really quite important. So, yeah, the balance is difficult. But I noticed that the, the there's a few comments in the chat around our experience as academics around picking up on those cues. And if students have got cameras and microphones off for, you know, often very justifiable reasons because of their environment or how they feel comfortable with it, it's really hard when you compare that to a seminar 
and you can see if a student is disengaging or if they're struggling you can pick up on them cues that something's not quite right and you can go to them and you can remedy that but in an online environment it's really really hard um, and I think you know on behalf of quite a few academics it's, that's a bit that we can really really struggle with but maybe the developing of that social helps that because students might feel more comfortable coming forward to say that they need more support. I think this is absolutely key. I'm going to pick up on something Christina's um, pointed out about professionalism and how sometimes we view professionalism through a very narrow lens that it's basically you know, if you've got uh, uh, the right clothes, um, the right sort of uh, um, approach in, in the classroom, but actually professionalism is, is far greater, far broader for me than that and professionalism is all about sort of doing the right thing and the, the right attitude and you know there's all sorts of ways of doing this so I know you know, I know we're not um, unique when I say that we've put together various things of like social media uh, through social media through uh, communities of practice um, I think V's on the call so she'll talk I'm sure about some sort of connect that McGraw Hill do which is, which is a very useful way of linking in uh, staff and students um, but I think it's trying to make sure that students feel that sort of connection with, with lecturers and you know even if they're the, the situation they're joining the lessons are on is, is is a difficult one at least they know that there's somebody there and that person will you know will support it's a very delicate it's balancing act but I think my general point is professionalism is all about sort of that support and trying to do the right thing absolutely and and, and it's it is around the sort of appropriateness of of behaviors and yeah I and mean, the human factor is really really important here but i'm just thinking back to a recent stakeholder um consultation that we've done with some businesses about how we prepare students for the world of work and you know there's some real i guess you know direct comments made if there's a grammatical error in an email i won't interview that student if there's if there's a problem with the formatting of the cv i won't shortlist that student and so it's that uh you know you could you could question them whether there's a fit environment issue going on there but um the, the, we do need to make sure that students are aware of the realities of the different settings that they would be communicating in. I mean, I personally wouldn't be offended if a student emailed me and it was quite informal, that's fine. But I would also want to make sure that they knew that down the line, you change your mode of communication depending on the setting that you're in. So yeah, it's a difficult balance, I think. I, I think, I do think though that, um the whole university experience is, is all a learning curve. Everything's learning. It's living away from your family for the first time and learning new content and adjusting to the campus in a different location and, and all of those things that if you have a level to which you can be informal enough to say to your lecturers or, or you know, someone that you know within the university who doesn't even have to be your lecturer and say, I have no idea how to write a professional email. Can you help? Can you, do you have five minutes to talk me through it? That it's, better for students to learn that while they're still in university or to, for me you know for me to write an email and then someone say that's not quite the format that we would normally use try doing this next time um that again that informality allows students to guide themselves or to ask for help to learn how to be formal when they need to be when it's important Absolutely. There's some really interesting things coming through on the chat. Um, I see that V shared the link to the um, to the Connect resources as well, so it might be useful to take a, a look at this. I'm, I'm enjoying the discussion about flip flops and wellies. Actually, I mean, it is, it is the case that you know, our whole attire has completely changed in the last 15 months. And, uh, <laughs> The worry about getting up and answering the door is that everybody will see what happens sort of below this level and you know you're, I'm sat here in my you know my Leeds United 1993 football shirt at uh, shorts and and you know you, there's people that just really don't get to see that. <laughs> I wonder what it will be like when we're back on campus will there be people walking around in Leeds United shorts or will we be in suits and, uh, and smart attire I don't know. 
But I think the interesting thing here, uh, and, and you know, all three of us here, and, and I'm sure many in the chat are in a really unusual situation that our roles have changed or that we've entered the university in the middle of the pandemic. And for myself, you know, I've not met hardly any work with in person yet. And for our students, particularly first years that are, sorry about the noise, that the, 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 the been the way to collect the right side. <laughs> um, but yeah, from our first year students that are coming back in September, for them, it's it's almost like, you know, that we all we almost need to do a, a new Freshers Week forum or, or a reintroduction because they might not have even been able to get onto campus and they'll be seeing them so their their academics and their um fellow course mates for the first time. How do you think how do you think that will feel, Maya? Well I I um I set up a, a WhatsApp group for uh, my course representative position just so that people could, you know, instead of having to email me, they could just send a message. And that's become a massive informal chat. So we've agreed on my course to, to do freshers together and to all get T-shirts printed with our student photo and our login so that we know who everyone is, because that's how we all know each other at the moment. You know, I don't know necessarily then. I know their nickname on, on Microsoft Teams and that's that's probably about it for most people. So that's how I'm, that's how we're going about it. Year one law and criminal justice and, you know, maybe some inspiration for some other people, but I think it will be strange hearing people, but having no idea who anyone is. See, I'm going to borrow that idea. That is such a good idea. I love it. I do think on a serious, on a serious note for, induction induction this year or for the next academic year is going to be completely different yeah, there's going to be level five students who have not been on campus we've got new level four students master students who haven't been on campus as well so i think that sort of idea of the extended induction is going to be absolutely vital yeah as danny said in the chat that they're planning these get to know you events at coventry i think we're gonna you know we we, we need to make sure that we provide opportunities for students to to do that and we know that the student experience happens far outside of the classroom as well and and that you know we may need to consider how we get students to engage with things like societies and events and you know like like your example there Maya of, of having the whatsapp group you, you've already created a, a community but it's how community something that's more visible and that will encourage people to continue interacting um you know once you're able to get back onto campus so um it sounds like you've been doing a well i know that you've been doing a fantastic job <laughs> um i think we, we're almost coming to the close i just i just wondered whether um either mayor or peter was there anything else that you wanted to add or if there's anything in the chat that anybody wanted to to pick up on um I, I did see a comment from danny i believe um about learning the norms for your particular profession um and and it just reminded me of something that uh was discussed with with some of the people that i'm in a year with um on the same course with rather about potentially suggesting to the university to have uh you know, an optional session or, or event, whether it's in the library or what have you, for particular courses to discuss professional norms, to discuss, you know, specific things that you may need to know about, to know about say, going into uh, becoming a barrister or into some, you know, business venture, um, because that's information that you don't really come across too much and it doesn't necessarily come up in the learning material. So I'm, I'm glad that comment was raised. That's something that I think students would maybe be very interested in. I'd just like to say thank you to everybody who's participated and all of the questions. I mean, I've enjoyed that immensely, um, especially the idea of Dennis in sequined um, uh, uh, shoes as well. Um, but I think most of all, a massive thank you to Maya, who's uh, as ever a complete star. So thank you so much for all of your insight. It's given us such an idea of how students think and how students see us as well. Well, thank you for having me. It's It's been a pleasure. So thank you very much. Okay.
So I think we need to bring it to a close now so everyone can jump to the next session. Um, thanks, Rami, as well, for everyone's contribution and hopefully see you in other sessions later on today.